afternoon. It's time for the Gateway Live Update. We're a daily, Monday through Friday, 15-minute webcast where we look at the Word a little bit. We're in the Gospel of Mark, and we pray during the coronavirus epidemic. Wonder what we're going to do after the epidemic's over, the pandemic, or whatever you want to call it. Some people don't even believe in it, but whatever, either way, we're praying about what to do. Uh, we're going to continue right now. We're in Mark 15. If you want to turn there, the beginning of Mark 15, we left off with Peter weeping, bawling his eyes out and crying and wondering what in the world is going on after he denied Jesus and the rooster crowed and he wept bitterly. Where we talked last week, and you can go back and check out our last week broadcast where we talk about how Peter was where he wasn't supposed to be. He was warming himself by the fires, the unbelievers, and that the enemies of Jesus had lit, and how sometimes we find ourselves hanging out with friends who are non-believers or enemies of the Lord. And by the way, they're enemies of the Lord if they're not saved. And even if they know it or not, or if they care or not, that doesn't matter. So good advice you can get from Peter. Read First and Second Peter. He talks a lot about that kind of stuff. But right now we're with Jesus after he was just denied, uh, transitions to chapter 15. It's interesting in the Gospel of John at this time when the rooster crowed, it said Jesus was being led out of the high priest's house and he turned and looked right at Peter in the eye. Just imagine how Peter felt. And it says in verse 1 of chapter 15 of Gospel of Mark, only two chapters to go, as soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and the scribes and the whole council. In other words, again, the whole Sanhedrin. They were there. The sun's up now. They legally can meet. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. Their decision was, hey, let's give him to the Romans. And so they take him to Pilate. What a horrible thing to take one of your brothers, especially in these days in Jerusalem. It was a really big deal. So they lead Jesus away, gave him over to Pilate, and Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He asked him the question, are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, you have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. So Jesus never denied when they asked if he was the Messiah, the Son of God, or the King of the Jews. Hey, it's just like you said. You said it. That's what I said. But he didn't expound on it. He let them expound in their minds. And when he said, you have said so, they accused him of many things. And remember, we saw in chapter 14, they trying to get false witnesses to say on stuff, but they couldn't agree on it because... You had to have two or three witnesses say the same thing. And because it's all lies, that's what happens. So here you have Jesus again with the Sanhedrin, and they hand him over to Pilate, accusing him of many things. And just in verse 4, it says, And Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you, and they bring all these charges against him in front of the Roman pontiff. I just can't imagine that, how they could have done that. Such betrayal nationwide to a brother in Israel, a, a rabbi, and they bring all these charges. But Jesus made no further answer so that Pilate was amazed. They bring him to Pilate. He didn't say anything. Again, as the sheep before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth, Isaiah 53. Jesus didn't defend himself. He didn't talk about himself. Now, as we continue in chapter 15, it says in verse 6, Now, at the feast, Pilate used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder and insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. Barabbas, 
Barabbas means son of the father. Isn't that interesting? So a large crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And they answered him saying, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews, the title that they had given Jesus? For he perceived it was out of envy that the chief priest delivered him up. And that's good perception because that's exactly what was happening. Jesus was getting all the crowds and they were, wow, nobody ever taught like him with such authority. And they were jealous. In verse 11, but the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have them release Barabbas said. So they had a murderer and an insurrectionist, in other words, a bad criminal released, who was guilty and condemned Jesus who never sinned, ever. Never had any sin. And Pilate, verse 12, said to them again, then what shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out, crucify him. And Pilate said to them, what? Crucify? That's what he heard, that crucify. It's a horrible kind of capital punishment. What? Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them, Baraba, and having scourged Jesus. Now, it's interesting, it just says scourged. That's a Roman judicial penalty consisting of severe beating with multi-lashed whip containing embedded pieces of bone and metal, shredding his skin. He delivered Jesus up to be crucified. Pilate gave in to the popular mentality. And again, Mark just gives a short version, but it gets to the point. And right after that, it says, and the soldiers led him away. Now he gets Roman soldiers instead of the temple guard. The Roman soldiers led him away inside the palace that is called the governor's headquarters. Now, that's interesting. They bring him into uh, Pilate's headquarters. The Greek word there and the Roman word is called the praetorium. So he's in the praetorium and they called together the whole battalion, it says. Um, again, the Greek word there is cohort, which you might have in your translation. A cohort is a Roman legion, usually about 600 men, 550 to 600. And they clothed him in a purple cloak and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on him. And again, as I always like to remind us, the crown of thorns isn't like you see on the movies. It goes around here. The crown covers the whole skull. And they put it on him and beat it into his skull. It was a very horrible thing. After he had already been spit on, punched, beat, whipped beyond recognition, now he gets treated like this. And he did that for you and for me. He didn't have to do it. He did it for you and for me. And they began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews. And they were striking his head with a reed. Again, the crown of thorns still on there. And spitting on him and kneeling down in homage to him. Just imagine that. You get abused by the Jewish guys who work there at the temple as the temple guard. And now the Roman pagan uncircumcised soldiers are abusing Jesus, who is very kosher. And this is horrible. Horrible for him. And they knelt down and paying homage, mocking him. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple coat and put on his own clothes. And they led him out to be crucified. A horrible condemnation for our Messiah. And what he did for you and for me. He didn't deserve any of that. Yet he still did it. And he did it for us. Even just going through that was so horrible, was so unqualified. But he did it for you and for I. He did it because he chose to, 
not because he wanted to, he chose to obey the Father and to submit himself to that. Humiliation, being spit on, and no, that's bad enough, but then being whipped beyond recognition, having his beard ripped out of his face, a crown of thorns on his head, shredded back. He did it for you and for I. And they mocked him. They stripped him of that beautiful purple kingly coat. They mocked him in and put on his own clothes and they led him out to crucify him. And the crucifixion is the most horrible form of torture and capital punishment we could dream of. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow. Again, going through the central point of the gospel. The main point of our four, four gospels is Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and we're at it. And so we'll be here in verse 15, 21 tomorrow, and I encourage you to tune in. You never can look at the cross enough. The cross is everything. It's as, as high as it gets in Christianity. So read ahead, be praying. We're going to pray right now. Don't forget, 9 p.m. every night, we pray at exactly 9 p.m. each and every night. And as we do, we pray against coronavirus. That's what we're here for. That's what we're about to do now. We pray against this pandemic. It's still uh, hoovering over us. Now, some people say first week of November, it's going to disappear. I don't know. I don't really believe that. I hope it's true. But I want to go after the people who manipulated it. Um, it's great because we're open again. Um, yesterday we had a really good service and had some friends back, uh, some of our widows who we really love here, um, back and fellowshipping with us. And we stayed distanced and we wore masks, but we got to fellowship. So praise God. And um, we hope we see more and more opening up and worshiping God in person because the Bible tells us did not give up meeting together. It doesn't say not give up watching the service on the computer. That's not in there. It's meeting together for encouragement and accountability. And we hope if you haven't been out yet that you could do that yourself this coming Sunday or this Wednesday night. So join us. Let's pray. And as we pray, remember the this pandemic and everything's going on. And Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your awesome presence, Lord. We thank you for your agape love, Lord, that you love us. We thank you, Lord, that you have called us out of this world and into your kingdom. And at, right now, Lord, we touch and agree, believing that you will destroy completely COVID-19 off the face of the planet, that it will have no effect on people, Lord, and that you would, in its place, bring revival, Lord. You said if your people were called by your name, would would seek your face and pray and humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, you would hear from heaven, Lord. Please hear, please do, and please touch us. In the wonderful and awesome name of Jesus, we pray. And we thank you, Lord. Amen. Again, don't forget, 9 p.m., prayer again. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll be back Tuesday and Wednesday. We'll be in the morning and evening at 7.30 p.m., so join us, and don't forget to keep seeking the Lord. Agree, get in the Word, listen to Jesus. Don't listen to people, listen to Jesus. Until we greet you on the morrow, may God's richest and blessed be yours.